Hey, good morning, Graptel Army. I hope the start of your day is amazing. Today's gonna be a little bit of a throwback because my good friend, my camera guy, my editor, my confidant, all those things actually out sick. And you guys know right now, it's not a good idea for me to be around sick people. Which means we're going back to old school vlog style with just me being my own camera guy for the day. And I figured I would just do a kind of update of what's been going on here, not just with me, but with the entire place. Perfect. Look at this Drogo. We gotta go check out Drogo. Drogo is rarely down here. What are you doing, you silly? Of course he does go all over the enclosure and he climbs around a lot, but he's normally in his hammock over uh, here. I love it when he's right here because not only is it cooler that I get a bird's eye view of him where he's right down here and oh, it's soft. I love the way he feels. Such a beautiful animal. I don't know what I did when, before I had a sloth, but it was absolutely incredible to have But him. I love when he's down here during open hours in particular because he's so accessible, right? When he's in the back, you can hardly see him. So uh, it's something that we have to think about when we go across the street. Having that kind of uh, different experience so that you can see them at all points. So what we'll probably do is maybe tuck the tree in the back corner or something on that line. But again, Drogo stays here. It's going to be for the new sloth across the street. And yes, yeah, still working on salt and peppers enclosure, but it is tore down now. We're getting progress on yeah, it. I'm going to have an entire video just about fixing this enclosure because trust me, there's about 200 steps that we have to do in order to hopefully have this thing fixed. Such a pain. But basically what's happening is that the seam right here, this goes to the side, yeah. actually cracked a little bit. The reason it cracked is because the waterfall had leaked for a year or a year and a and half. actually rotted away the wood and then the the wood actually sags. And of course, all the pressure of the water sags the seam right down here. And what do you think? It's gonna be pliable and it's gonna crack the seam. So we are fixing this, but again, that's not for today's video. Today's video, I'm just gonna give you the update on how everything is going here across the street at BHB and all that type of stuff. Oh, this is typically how the rest here looks. We're not open. We've got garbage cans, we've got no backers. By the way, if you guys ever need water done, you gotta get one of these. These are great. This is a, amazing. It's called a Pondo Vac. I don't know what point something or but other. But it's absolutely incredible. We use it on everything. Gonna use a bunch of them over across the street. Connie and Mike are on lunch too, so I'm here alone in the Reptarium, which isn't a bad thing, I'm gonna be honest with you, because it gives me an opportunity to look around, just see everything. Look at Tyson. He is doing so well. I mean, look at how cute he is. He's getting so big. I mean, again, you know, I know he's still small and he's super cute. He's absolutely adorable. Look at that little thing. Little monkey, I love him to death. Again, thinking about when we got him, when he was just like maybe, I don't know, 20% the size or something like that. I was so nervous about getting him. When we got him in and he was so small and so fragile, I thought, is this thing gonna do well? And Mike took him under his wing. Mike, this is Mike's baby, and uh, he's done a great job with Tyson. And you guys know that uh, nothing gets done around here without Connie and Mike because uh, I'm in such a <laughs> spot where I can't do all the stuff I used to do. These guys are rock stars. What are you guys doing? Dude? We're thinking about eating food. Thinking about <laughs> eating Speaking food. Of working hard. I actually just caught them before they left for lunch. I didn't realize that they were here still in the back. So are you guys doing all right? Well, I just finished cleaning all of the filters for the water tanks in this middle aisle, which takes a while. I just did all the glass on that side because we're open tonight. You gotta make it look That's pretty. Right, I forgot that we're open tonight. And you guys may not know that we're not just open Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We're actually open Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, which means you guys have to get the place looking even extra nice. Did mm. you just tape yes. your gloves? I said the same thing. <laughs> she wants to protect because like, I don't nails. like the feeling of the water getting in my glove. Because she got her nails. Yeah, my nails. I want to like have them last as long as I can. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Nail cam. Oh my gosh, unbelievable. But yeah, so now that we're open another couple days a week, there's a lot of things that we have to get done. We always want the place to look presentable no matter what. But there's just extra work that needs to be done when you're open to the public, right? Those little details that you might not worry about, like, you know, if an iguana has a little bit of the spray that they sneeze out and stuff like that. It's not that bad when we're not open. Typically, it's like, uh, we're not going to clean it twice a day or something like that. But when we're open, we usually have to clean the second time during the day because we clean it in the morning. By the time we're open, they've sneezed again and it just doesn't look good. People don't know that iguana sneeze so they see the snot on the cage they just think it's been dirty for a long time it's really just like an hour or two or something like that mike and connie extra work for them but hey it's awesome to have extra days off. by the way look at son of sam right here of course this is an african bullfrog they call him pixie frog the reason they call him pixie frog their scientific name is pixocephalus aspersus obviously a lot easier to just say pixie frog right so they're a pixie frog or an african bullfrog will get big of course this is the son of sam like i'd mentioned the reason is is because his dad was absolutely huge one biggest of the biggest african bullfrog I ever saw. His name was Sam. So of course, this is the son of Sam. And uh, he is getting big. I mean, when we got him, he was just like maybe this big. Now look at how huge he's getting. Within a year or so, he should be, you know, a literally a two and a half, three pound frog. So all in all, things are going great here at the Reptarium. Then over at BHB, things are in a constant state of kind of flux here. We're kind of moving things around. You guys know that we're putting some mammals over here. We're kind of changing things around, but hey, things are still going. I mean, we still have all our leopard geckos. We have a bunch of razor snakes over here. Really beautiful animals. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff over here. I mean, look at this tiger scaleless. 
horn snake right here. Hoo -hoo -hoo. I tell you, that is a beautiful snake. Ooh, it's a feisty little monkey too. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. Of course, the file snakes, you guys know that I always talk about file snakes and how incredible they are. Take a look at this animal right here. This, of course, is a cape file snake. They move really weird and it's starting to musk on me and now my hands stink. Oh my gosh, that is so smelly. Oh my gosh. PHP is doing great. Lots of babies are starting to hatch. We have tons of eggs. We got a ton of leopard gecko babies. We have all kinds of stuff going on. Matter of fact, here's some babies that just hatched this morning. Lori said we had a bunch of stuff. Looks like just some normal corns here. It looks like a little hypo corn right here. Not sure what the pairing is. Looks like we still have a bunch of corns in the egg. A albino heifer plasma to a hypo plasma. Plasma is actually a hypo lavender corn. So we kind of missed the odds on that one, but there's still a bunch of babies in the egg. So we might actually see something else. This is a beautiful clutch. Look at how cool. This is our actually kind of our, a barren Cleveland milk snake. So these are Halloween's and Oreos. And look at some of that. Look at that. That's a really good Oreo. And what you really want with the Oreos is have no red. This has just a little bit of red on it. And then we got some orange stuff on the other side. It looks like we have right here is a little Tessera corn snake. The Tessera corn snake is actually also diffuse corn snake. So the Tessera is an incomplete dominant. And then of course the diffuser, what they used to call blood red. They still do call blood red at some point. That's actually a recessive mutation. This is actually a caramel on top of it, which is pretty cool. So we have a caramel Tessera diffused and then we have butter Tessera diffuse corn as well. Now the butter is actually a caramel albino. So this is basically the same exact snake as that snake. One's an albino and one is a caramel. And look at how beautiful all these snakes are. I, I tell you what, oh, don't get away. This is usually when things start to go bad. I remember when I used to vlog on my own, I didn't have two hands, oh, how hard it was to show up baby snakes. Well, I can remember how that goes now. So we gotta make sure not to have baby snakes. Got a couple other things. This is another clutch of palmetto corns that had hatched out. Look at how beautiful these are. And it looks like we just have some albinos right here. They gotta be, oh, you know what these, these are? are it's extreme reverse Oka T albinos. And oh my goodness, they, beautiful. These ones are really cool. That's these ones right here. Ooh, man. I tell you what, that is a gorgeous snake right there. That is really beautiful. A whole bunch more palmetto corns, which is really cool. And we aren't gonna have the Kluber gear that we've had in the past. Again, some more house snakes hatched out. Looks like there's one in here that's really pretty, but this one's hype. I want that one to go away. This one right here is really, really pretty. Don't go away, buddy. Come on, come on. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So again, we won't have the Klubers that we had in the past. But we still have a lot of Klubers going on. And like I said, that ball pythons are starting to pop off as well. And then there, of course, is the dungeon. And you can see these are anacondas from earlier last year. They're actually Ivy's babies. This is actually Fernando. This is the male that I'm keeping. Don't tell Lori that I'm keeping it because she'll be really upset with because me. Because she said I wasn't allowed to keep any of the anacondas. But they're just so beautiful. Here's another one right here that's just a little bit smaller. But, uh, they're doing so well. And they're getting more and more docile and stuff like that. And again, you know, down here, things are popping off. I mean, getting eggs like crazy, putting them in the incubator. Starting to hatch. I'll do another baby update video. Let me know if you guys want to see that. And remember that super crazy Lori ball python that I got this year? It actually was bred to a Cine Lesser, bred to a super Lori leopard. Look at how it looks now that it's shed out. I mean, it's got that like ringer spot on this side. It's really crazy. It's got that gray look to it. Its head has got really interesting pattern. It's got the stripe kind of on the first third of the body. It's absolutely ridiculous how it's look. I have no idea how this is possible. Absolutely something Lelic is going on. There's no doubt about so it. So we know it's got to be a Lori because it was a super Lori leopard. It could be a leopard which it absolutely looks like it and is. then it could only be a cine and a lesser this is definitely nothing like the cine lesser lori leopard that we produced last year I and mean, they look completely different they're not gray they're actually brownish -like. so this is just a really unique unusual animal. again has to be something allelic with that gene so it's always exciting because it just means there's more mystery to be solved I know you guys are probably wondering if I'm doing an update, why not update across the street? Well, guess what this is right here. See this big old stack of papers? We finally got the last drawings in that we need to go to the city today. So we're actually taking these to the city. We're gonna submit them to get the permit so we can start working on the inside of the building. As of now, we've been waiting on these. these. MEPs, which is mechanical, electrical, and plumbing. Now we have all this crazy paper here. It has all the details of everything that we have to do on the inside, electrical, plumbing, you name it, it's on here. The exhibits, the entire thing. Thanks. So we can really get things started really quick so to the city hopefully we'll have our permits approved by early next week and then we start to heat as up. for across the street it's been kind of a downer of a week week and a half or so you guys know that things move in spurts right it's like you get really a ton of stuff done and then you have to wait for the next permit or the next materials or the next thing like this. so this is where we're at across the street right now these windows and doors that are going to go right here are actually going to get start to get framed the steel frame that goes for the window you know how the steel in between the windows that actually starts happening in the next day or two not within the next three or four days for sure and then about a 
week after they're done with that week, week and a half, they'll be done with that. We'll have all of the grid that goes along here, including the door. Then they actually put the glazing in or the windows. So in. then that goes. And then finally, the next week, we have the steel guys coming to wrap all this. Because all this black right here and plywood up here. Two shades of blue. And then the up top here, this overhang, is going to be a gold color. So that's going to take about three weeks or so. And then this entire front of the building is going to be but done. But we are, like I said, just got those permits in. As soon as those permits get approved, inside starts happening. And from the day that that happens till we open there up, there will always be something going on. We're so in the last little lull here where it's been kind of a bummer coming over seeing here. Seeing the beautiful time. Oh, it's beautiful. Seeing the wave of the windows. All that is absolutely incredible. But the fact is, is until we get going, I get bummed out. So the last week, week and a half, it's just been kind of like, oh, nothing's happening over there. There's but been a lot of planning happening, just not a lot of physical but work. But within the next couple days, we start again, and then it goes full bore until we get open, hopefully in early December. And of course, when you're a business owner, it's not just all running the business. It's a lot of physical work. So what are you doing today? Well, I'm actually feeding some stuff. So Lori's job responsibility is overseeing just, things, paying the bills, taking care of pretty much everything around, you know, the the, uh, the be all end all. But you also work on reptiles all the time. Yeah, still gotta take care of the animals. So that's the thing guys, if you want a successful start in business, the thing is you've gotta be hands on with everything and be a part of everything. Not only is it good because then you know everything that's going on, but also uh, it just means you care about your business and that's how you're gonna be successful. Two last things I wanted to tell you guys about. First is of course, Animal Con USA. You guys definitely wanna go check it out September 15th through the 17th down in Orlando, Florida. It'll be crazy. About 150 of your favorite top creators and meet, greet, watch panels, all kinds of stuff. There's going to be a skate off. There's going to be a live podcast going on the entire weekend. There's all kinds of things. There's going to be some animals you can meet there. If you don't want to just meet your favorite creator, you want to meet some animals. There's going to be some really cool animals there. It's going to be an absolute great time. Again, get your tickets now September 15th through the 17th, Orlando, Florida, AnimalConUSA.com. And then, of course, there's the aquarium house. I'm not going to drive over there today because we actually have someone staying there today. So I can't really barge in and say, hey, what's going on? But that's another thing that we work on all the time. Not only do we have to keep the fish healthy, we have to keep you know everything going and keep it clean and ready for people. Aquarium House is great. If you're ever in town, Detroit, you want to stay at a cool place for a day, definitely check out the Aquarium House. It's absolutely amazing. I'll put a link in the description. It's, uh, it's just a cool place. And by the way, I have to take you guys over there when no one is over there because we have a bunch of little fry cichlids. You know, they finally, they're mouth breeders. So they have babies and they actually keep them in their mouth. Well, they now are out of their mouth and swimming around and it's so cute. You see probably 50 or 60 little baby cichlids just swimming around. I'll have to definitely update that on you guys soon. So that's it. Old school vlog. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a wonderful day. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, there's a playlist that you can watch all kinds of videos. You can also hit that subscription button. It would mean a lot to me. Also hit that like button while you're down there. Have a wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to someone and I promise I'll see you in the next one.